All right, this is a really fun animation. We're gonna be creating this using geometry nodes and there's some pretty cool takeaways for this. The first one is we're gonna be using textures to shape and model our curves rather than using textures to animate the curves. Then I'm gonna show you how to use geometry nodes to communicate with the shading in order to get some really cool effects and some really cool animations. And lastly, we're gonna do some simple lighting to get a really effective end result. Now this tutorial is actually part of a longer tutorial series on my Patreon where I show you how to use geometry nodes to make some really effective motion graphics. The series consists of five individual tutorials, totaling about 90 minutes of training. Not only are you going to walk away with a really cool animation by the end of each of the tutorials, but there are so many really cool workflow tips and tricks within them that you can apply to any animation you want. If you're interested in learning more about geometry nodes and more motion graphics in Blender, my Patreon is the best place to do that. If you want to check it out, that's going to be linked in the description and you can get 10% off if you pay annually. With that being said, let's get into the tutorial. All right, we are going to start out in a blank document and let's go ahead and get a brand new window. I'm gonna hit Shift A and just get a plane, just really any geometry you want to get this going. And I'm gonna bring this over to the Geometry Nodes Editor and remove this window, click New, and let's get this going. So first we're gonna get a mesh line and he's gonna be able to hold all of our uh, curves that we're gonna displace here. So first we're gonna need to get a transform geometry so that we can actually move this line around. And so I'm gonna rotate it by 90 degrees on the Y. Now you can see this count of 10, that means you can hold 10 objects on this line that's gonna have 10 um, points. So we're gonna get a instance on points node. We're gonna get a quadratic Bezier and we're gonna plug the curve into the instance. So now we have these guys doing what they do and I'm gonna click and drag and type in zero and then click on the Y and now we have our curves that can you know be displaced and have a lot of fun. So let's bring them over something like this. And then on the mesh line, we're just gonna bring it in something like, something around that. And then if you bring up your count, you'll get more of these. And this is gonna set up the uh, area that we can actually displace and create some interesting geometry. And so now that we have this, if you want your you know object to be in the middle of the scene, just play with it on the, on the uh, transform geometry node, but now we're ready to actually displace what we have going on here to create some interesting f effects. So we need to get a set position node. We're gonna bring it down and we're gonna get a combine XYZ because we just need access to the Z, right? And so we're just gonna plug vector into offset. So now we have access to the Z. We can go ahead and get a brick texture and that's gonna be the main texture we're gonna play with, plug it into the Z. It's gonna do that. What I wanna do now is to get a map range, bring the two min to negative one. That's gonna kind of zero out our uh, displacement, keep it in the middle. And then we need to get a math node, switch it over to multiply. And if you're not really too, too familiar with math nodes, I'm not either. The easiest thing to remember is if you want to have a strength slider with something like this, use a multiply, and that's exactly how it's gonna act, just as a strength and how much displacement. Now you can notice it's kind of acting weird. That's because we need to realize the instances first, and then we can actually get a proper displacement. So with that being said, this is now very low poly and that the quadratic Bezier is going to be our resolution. So if you bring your resolution to the max, and then uh, we can just bring down the mortar here and then bring up your scale, you can notice we now have some really cool looking geometry. Another thing you can do is if you can get a color ramp and actually kind of goof around with the color, kind of have like a master goof, um, right before this map range. So you can get some flat portions of this texture, which I find to make it look really, really nice. Or actually, it's moving it around. We should put it after the map range so that we can get some interesting stuff. So if you bring it up, you can bring this up here, get some more flat portions if you want. So this is when you can start playing around with the brick texture. So you can bring it in like this and then bring it in like that to start to get some cool effects going. And then remember, this multiply is your strength here. So you can bring it as tall or as small as you want it to be. I'm trying to envision this with geometry before we actually add geometry. Just try to see how cool this looks. 
Um, so maybe you can make play with the stretch, bring it in some more, just see how this might look for your final. And again, if you want to have some flat portions of the scene, you can do that with your color ramp. So there's tons of editability. I would say pause the video and play around with what you can edit in the scene to get some really interesting stuff. So you can kind of squash middle portions, play with your brick width and all that fun stuff to get a really cool looking texture. So I'd say pause the video, play around with this, see what you can get. I'm just kind of going to go with a general look here so you guys can kind of follow along and let's move on to adding some geometry. So go to the end of your scene here and we're going to add in a curve to mesh right here and we're going to get a curve circle. We're gonna plug this right into the profile curve and the radius of the circle is gonna be how wide or like how thick your pipes are essentially. I'm gonna bring my resolution down to six so that it's easier to see so it's not super slow. And then we can do something like this, maybe a radius of 0.4 should look good. And then you can go back over here, right here, to the mesh line and you can go like how far apart do you want these objects to be? Looks like. 0.8 looks nice. And then if you want to check out what that final result would look like, go to the resolution of 32. That looks about right to me. I'm going to keep it at six while I'm working. Now that we have this, I'm going to go ahead and set up my camera angle because we're going to go into lighting now. So I'm going to get my camera, control alt zero, snap it to view. And then you can click on the camera, do a orthographic view, and then something like this. And just pick where in the scene you think it looks really, really cool. Right here looks nice. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get a regular plane to go on our floor and make sure that he is underneath. Give it a simple metallic dark material. And then for here, we're gonna give it a new material as well. We'll just call it main. I think that's the state main, whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna put it here and give it a slightly dark color as well. But if we go here to the material preview, this actually won't have the material. So go into geometry nodes, set material. We're gonna get a set material node and put it right before the group output and then select that material. And now you can see it there. So if we switch this guy back over to the shader editor, you'll see, make sure main says it up there. I'm gonna hit the period key just so I can see it. And let's do some really cool stuff here. Now, remember I said in the beginning that we're gonna get geometry nodes to be able to communicate with the shading. So what I wanna do is first have the shading be able to recognize every individual little tube, right? Um, also, if you hear some jingling in the background, my cat is just having a field day, um, but I'm not gonna tell her to stop. So right now, if we head back into geometry nodes, because we have a realize instances node, um, it's basically geometry nodes. I mean, the shading just sees this as one solid object, not an object with a bunch of little objects in it. Um, and that's because we have realized instances. So we have to be able to sort of get something right here to be able to communicate. So that's gonna be a store named attribute. And this is one of the easiest um, ways to kind of understand the attribute. So first, we want the shading to be able to recognize that there are individual instances, and then we need to just give it any name we want. We're gonna call it random because we're gonna get a random value to be able to specify like, hey, we need just pure randomness. And so we can get a random value, plug it into the value here. And that is gonna now say, randomize the instances and we need to have this name here to communicate, right? So if we head back into shading, we can watch that happen. So what I wanna do is get a another principled node and then make it uh, glass. So bring your roughness down, make it you know, kind of glassy, bring your brightness up. We're gonna get a mix shader, plug it here, and then let's randomize some with glass and some with metal. So let's get a color ramp right here. We're gonna get a noise texture so we can actually um, move that randomness around so it's not just like one static set of random data so plug it there, switch this over to 4D, and we're gonna get a attribute node. And now this guy, this attribute node here is gonna be the thing that talks back and forth. So remember exactly what you titled it. 
and then use the factor, and then you'll see it happening. So if I switch this over to constant so that there's not a fade, you can see, bam, look at that. We now have randomness. So I'm just, I just want a few, you know, a few glass tubes, right? So now we have a few that we can actually, in the emission, make emissive. And now we're at the emission part of the, uh, the scene. I want a wave texture to be able to read that these are uh, curves and they kind of displace a little bit. They just, I want it to be able to recognize that so it doesn't, uh, just so that it maps correctly, essentially. And it's very easy with a wave texture. You can just specify an X, Y, Z, but this is sort of the most solid, efficient way to do it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go back to uh, geometry nodes and then right before we added geometry to the scene, right with this curve to mesh, we're gonna get, get a, we're gonna get another store named attribute. I'm just gonna call this one wave. Again, call this whatever you want. Just make sure it's easy to remember and you can type it. We're gonna keep it on these default settings. And like I said, I want the shading to be able to read that something's going on. So we're gonna get a spline parameter. He's gonna be able to specify that and we're gonna use factor into the value. And that is what the factor is going to say like, hey, we can see these, right? We can see that there's splines. So if we head back into the shader editor, I'm gonna hit the period key just to see everything. We are gonna go ahead and start to get that wave texture. So if I go here and get a color ramp, plug into the color so that we can say, hey, let's make it a nice blue. Let's get a, a wave texture, plug that the factor into the factor. And then essentially this is gonna be our mapping in a way, or just, you know, our data. So we're gonna get, to get a, another attribute node and type in wave to get that attribute we made and plug factor into vector. Now we have our wave texture actually working properly and not like speeding up at displaced moments and all that stuff. So it's really, really cool. Um, I'm gonna get my, co uh, my color ramp onto constant so we can get solid objects and you can see this is the animation. If you wanna have a little bit more of an interesting animation, you can bring up your distortion and it's going to do this, which I think looks cool. And the more distortion, the more like whacked out it's going to be, I think it it's just makes it look super cool. Again, this is probably a good time to save because I thought my computer was about to crash, but you can play around with this if you want, maybe bring up your detail. And uh, it's gonna give you, if you do more detail, it's gonna give you like this really cool like data transfer looking animation. So now I'm gonna bring my strength up to like 30 so it's nice and bright. And then we can head in, let's go ahead and make this animation loop first. So I'm gonna give myself 120 frames. Make sure, make sure you're in your preferences, your animation is set to linear. So that's gonna keep it nice and looped. So here on the phase offset, I'm gonna go back to fate, um, frame zero. I'm gonna hit I, go to the very end, and I'm gonna type in say 12 to asterisk pi. All right, cool. So now we have a pretty sick animation. This looks awesome. I'm gonna close that window and all we have left to do is our lighting. And so what we're gonna do, you can use Eevee if you'd like to make it easier on your computer, depending on what you have. I'm gonna use cycles. And what I like to do when playing with lighting that's kind of pretty heavy on the computer, I'm gonna go ahead and get a new window, bring this to the 3D viewport, I'm gonna hit zero. We are gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go here to the cycles view and I'm gonna get a render region. So I wanna preview my lighting down here so it's easy and then just kind of move up, move around my lights up here. So first I wanna have a red light kind of hitting the opposite direction of the light, I mean of the camera. So we're gonna get an area light. I'm gonna hit G, move it back here. I'm gonna hit R twice. And then here in the light settings, I'm gonna switch it over to a disc, make it orange, give it a power of like 300 and then bring your spread significantly down till you can start to see the light, just kind of like covering a small portion of your scene. And that this is gonna give it a really cool looking style where the red is just covering here, maybe make it a little bit more orange, then you can bring up that brightness. Sweet. So this looks nice. I'm gonna maybe bring it up a little bit 
And then I'm going to hit R twice just to kind of angle it away from the camera. I only want the red to just cover like half of the scene and then, you know, be nice and bright. Cool. So this looks really, really cool. What I want to do now is get another light. And so I'm going to hit Shift A, get another area light, bring it in the direction of the camera. I'm going to hit R twice. I'm going to hit S to scale it up nice and big and then give it a nice light blue and then bring that power up until you start to see that light start to affect things. So now you can start to see it here. So maybe like 2000 on the brightness. I'm gonna hit G and move it over here and maybe bring it up like that. So if you look at it, if you look at it now, we have a really, really cool looking style. And then what I want to do is get one more light to sort of fill out. Kind of messed up on my window here. Just wanted to minimize that. Um, what I want to do is to get one more light to kind of fill out this scene. So I'm going to hit Shift D on this big blue one. And then hit R twice to kind of point it. And then we're going to make it this really deep blue that's going to be kind of hard to see so that it's going to kind of fill out the scene with this really cool deep blue. So here's what it looks like without it. Maybe give it a scale strength of like 2000 possibly. And it's going to be very, very subtle, but really effective, but really effective in our scene. I'm going to head back to geometry nodes and just bring my curved circle to a resolution of 32 so it fills out really nice and makes this scene really solid. And we are done. If I go here to the material preview, you can see our um, animations just kind of cycling through, doing some really cool stuff. This is our final look. I would go ahead and I would go and kind of perfect the lighting a little bit. I would make the, the red a little bit more solid, maybe, ang maybe angle it up a little bit. So I would go ahead and change it up, get the style right, get everything right, and then once you're ready to go, um, I'm gonna render it at 1920 by 1080 on my uh, samples. It is gonna be pretty noisy. I would pop it up to maybe 400 samples and uh, denoise it and then render, render animation. And when you're done, you're gonna have something really, really cool similar to mine. Go ahead and change your textures. This one's gonna take just a lot of tweaking and touching and doing different things to make it look the way you want it to look. Uh, but with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Again, if you want to check out the full tutorial series on my Patreon where we can dive into some really cool MoGraph tricks and geometry nodes, that is linked in the description. And again, you can get 10% off if you subscribe annually. With that being said, I hope you learned some stuff and I'll see you in the next tutorial.